Okay, at this point, you're preparing for your very first flight with the Vortex. Now, of course, you're not just going to plug in your packs and uh, spool up and lift off without taking some precautions. So um, have a look at the Chapter 3 document for the Vortex. It lists some uh, safety precautions that you should take before each flight. This video is just going to cover the first two, uh, making sure that the Vortex is operating correctly and making sure that it is compensating in the correct direction. So bear with me here. We're going to start right from scratch. So there's no question as to uh, what you should see um, during these two checks. So we're power on the transmitter. Put the transmitter in throttle hold. And now we'll power up the receiver. Now keep in mind, as soon as the Vortex receives power, it's going to start a uh, calibration process that takes about four seconds. During this process, make sure that the transmitter is not disturbed, don't move the sticks, and also make sure the model stays completely still. What you'll see when the Vortex completes the calibration successfully is the swash plate will zip up and down here. You'll also see a little bit of movement in the tail. And on the flight computer and the sensor will show a solid blue light. So that's what we're looking for. Zipping up and down, solid blue lights. So make sure we're in throttle hold. We'll plug in the power, keep the model still. Watch the swash. Okay, you saw the swash plate do its thing. I'm looking at the flight computer and the sensor and I have a solid blue LED. So now we can go ahead and proceed with the uh, flight control check. This is how you determine that the vortex is operating correctly, is to move the collective stick um, to the high position. Make sure you get positive collective and low position negative. Um, go back to the center position on collective and now we'll operate the cyclic stick. When I move it right aileron, I get a right tilt of the swash. Left aileron gives me a left tilt. When I go elevator forward, I get a forward tilt of the swash. And same thing with back elevator, I get a backwards tilt. So go ahead and operate your rudder stick left and right and watch your tail mechanism. Make sure that your tail mechanism is giving you left and right rudder. So now we can proceed with making sure the vortex is compensating correctly. So for this, we want to uh, tilt the helicopter um, forward and backwards, left and right, and make sure that whatever direction we tilt the helicopter in, the swash plate actually goes in the opposite direction. So I like to hold the model in my hand for this and rock it back and forth. So as I rock it back and forth, take a look at the swash plate here it's going to tilt in the opposite direction as I'm tilting the helicopter and it will have the appearance that it's staying level. Okay, That's what you want to see. You want to see that swash plate going in the opposite direction. Do the same thing for roll. And when you're actually doing this for yourself, it will be easier to see that the swash plate is trying to stay level. That's the vortex compensating for the movement of the helicopter. That's what you want to look for. Do the same thing for um, yaw. Rotate your helicopter like this, watch the tail, and make sure that the vortex is compensating by giving rudder in the opposite direction that the helicopter is moving, okay? Just like the swash, it you, you want it to go opposite. All right, so that's all there is to the first two steps of verification on the vortex. Those things you should do before every flight and when you have made sure that the rest of your helicopter is good to go, then you should be all set to fly.